Hello and welcome to Merlin's Brick News, a weekly show on all things brick building where we talk about set updates and announcements from all the major brands, mocks of the week and a few reading recommendations as well. Information is presented as always by setdb.org, the best source for set information on the internet. Actually, when it comes to setdb, we do not have any announcements this week or news or updates or new features. However, I did add here on the right side of the website, I think you should see this on almost every page, there is now a newsletter button and I have actually here integrated a table or basically all the different options, um, how you can follow us or basically get information. I mean, there are other ways to follow, but um, our RSS feed, email subscription, uh, newsletter features, telegram uh, channels, etc, etc. And also the links to all our different podcast outlets where you can hear or listen to this current show actually. And I have a question for you. What do you guys think? So far, um, when I had like internal pages, obviously when we talk about products, we show pictures of the products. But if it's internal pictures, like for instance here on the profile page, um, then you have um, basically just stock photo images uh, with the Merlin's uh, Bricks logo, a uh, logo, 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 I guess. However, for this page, I've done something different. I've asked um, basically Dolly, um, hey, can you generate me a picture? And I think I really like this design, what this K um, AI came up with. Um, so I'm, I'm interested what you guys think. Obviously, I mean, if you look into it in detail, it's actually kind of a Frankenstein thing. Um, it's impossible to do this with actual bricks, but I, I like this style and I may go for this instead of stock photos. Really interested in what you guys think, but I think, yeah, it's quite colorful. And um, I think I can repeatedly generate these kind of images quite easily. And I do like the style. Um, anyhow, that was just a question. So if you have an opinion on this, just let me know in the comment section with that. We're moving on to, as always, um, because we do this in alphabetic order, we go first to Blue Bricks, um, the, manner, the brand over here from Europe, from Germany. And here we have a couple of availabilities. First thing is the Carpentry, the 106807. Uh, run by a guy called uh, F. Eda. Um, actually, that is a German carpentry, as you may guess. And actually, it is from a very famous child TV series that is like, I don't know, 50 years old or so. Um, so that's why it's very, very famous over here in Germany uh, called Pumukel, around like a small little guy. Um, he was actually drawn. So it was like like um, an anime was the part of the small, um, the small, I don't know, it was called a kobold. Um, with red hair and uh, green trousers um, um, and yeah like I said he was beloved by kids and however only he was animated and the rest was like a, a real motion picture and I mean I haven't seen it for 40 years but <laughs> it was a it was a big thing when I was a kid anyhow so this is um, Blue Wix doesn't have a license or anything like that and a Pugurin that's why they just call it the carpentry but this is where, where it's from anyhow uh, you can get this bad boy which has more than 4,000 pieces for 100 and 50 euros that's 3.7 cents uh, a piece and yeah it's basically a modular in a style that is basically i would i guess uh, europe 70 years ago like after the war i guess uh, is basically the timeline we are talking about by the way this is here this depicts the cobalt and like i said he had red hair and and these green trousers and like I said, it was it was a beloved child's character. With that, we're moving on to the availability of the Castle Keep extension. This is version two of this extension. So um, basically, Blue Bricks. There were a couple of problems back in the day with the with the. Um, with the keep, um, with the original version. So the back wall was very tough to attach. Um, that was a huge problem. Um, there was a big risk when you attach it that the entire thing would almost like fall apart. And first of all, Blue Bricks has fixed this. So they are using now a different building technique here for this back wall. Um, so that should, should make things easier. And rumors say that they also have now numbered backs in this one as well, because the keep extension was the only of the Blaustein extensions that didn't have one and rumors also say it's not Gobrex pieces. Anyhow it's a second version has been done by a different designer. The original one was done by Martin now it's done by a designer called Yo uh, which is an interesting name. The 107089 it still costs 80 bucks. I think this was the original price uh, for that 7 cents a piece. The original might have been 10 bucks cheaper. I'm not 100% sure. By the way Bluebrex is also selling an update kit for the so that you could 
bring the original extension uh, to this one just with a couple of additional pieces. However, the extension is not yet available. What is available though is the Coffin Maker, um, another set out of the Wide West series of blue bricks. They haven't released one in a very long time actually. Uh, the 106851, so let's briefly go... Uh, no, this is my category. This is wrong. I wanted to have the Wild West category of Bluebergs. Yeah, the Indian Village, the Western Farm. I think this is like it's 2020. This is a very long time ago. And they haven't done much. And this is actually Bluebergs Special. The original Western series was mostly Bluebergs Pro, manufactured by Zingbao. And this is now one of, I think, just four or five sets out of the Western series that is Bluebergs Special. Uh, I guess it's Kun Long pieces. Um, and of, of course, as always with the specials, you only get a digital instruction and not a printed one. Anyhow, this thing has 1,516 pieces. Bluebricks is asking for 70 bucks. That's 4.6 cents a piece. As always, I keep saying this like every week. Never forget, for especially for North Americans, that in Europe that always includes um, uh, value add tax. Anyhow, moving on to another availability of the Expedition Vehicle with Off-Road Quad. The 106674 is now available uh, for 100 euros, 4.6 cents a piece. It's out of the 1 by 18 scale line of Blue Bricks, one of the larger ones actually. And yeah, it's a Mercedes-Benz truck um, with everything you need to uh, survive in the wild, I guess, in a certain degree of luxury is my assumption. You have the quad, you have the larger vehicles designed by Matteo. And yeah, I would say 100 bucks for this much stuff is not too shabby. 2,163 pieces only, but it's two kilograms as well. So this is not, there are a lot of large pieces in there. Anyhow, moving on to the 105637, the tank wagon filling station, uh, which is of course out of the very large lineup of Blue Bricks train sets or train related sets. So of course the idea is here that not you just not only have the tanks, and the truck, but of course also the tracks. So basically your train can come in and I don't know, do whatever the train is interested in. Basically um, load on the train, I guess, whatever is in the tanks. This thing has 1,318 pieces. Bluebricks is selling it for 60 bucks at 4.5 cents a piece. With that, we're moving on to Fun Hole. And here we have now availability of the new set, the Medieval Apothecary Shop, the 9024. So the 24th set that Fun Hole has ever done. It's still a pretty young brand, actually. I think they started like two years ago and are usually uh, releasing one set uh, per month. Um, so they take this slowly. Obviously, I've talked about this in the past. Fun Hole, keep in mind, is the company that is also behind the uh, retrofit and mock lighting solutions from uh, under the brands Bricksmax and Light Tailing. Um, so yeah, they really know their game when it comes to lighting. I'm actually building this one right now. I built yesterday a first part in live on stream on my German YouTube channel. And yeah, I had a lot of fun already with it. However, I'm far from being finished. Nice color, nice color scheme, I would say. Dark green, sand green, very nice to have this on the roof. I mean, it's a bit fantastical, right? That doesn't make much sense. Why, why would you? In, in the dark ages, you never had a green roof. I mean, you may have some moss on the roof, but yeah, maybe that's it. But anyhow, um, it looks pretty nice though. And um, in typical fun whole fashion with all the medieval sets, it's... It's relatively simple in its structure, right? There's not much complexity when it comes to building techniques on the walls. It's mostly just regular pieces. Um, but or regular bricks, I should rather say. There's not much with, with I don't know, pla plates, uh, round plates, um, jumper plates, stuff like that. No masonry bricks. It's only, or only very few masonry bricks. I think there are one or two. And it's, of course, a sticker-heavy set. There are no prints, I guess, in this set. However, you have two minifigures. You have... I have a cat, I guess, uh, this is. And yeah, I think the design is really beautiful. And of course, as always with Fun Hole, you have amazing lighting. So here you go. I always uh, keep saying people, well, if you have never, you know, never tipped your toe into into lighting water, so to say, for your Lego sets or for your mocks, um, Fun Hole sets are always good, a good way to get started. And uh, basically take a look at this because the Fun Hole manuals are really good. These, these sets have been designed and the manuals have been designed 
from the first break um, with lighting in mind. So the manual sets really explain very well how you should you know, run the cables and everything. They do this a lot better, by the way, than every Technic manufacturer I have ever seen. So um, that, that might be a good entry point. Anyhow, with that, we're moving on to Lego. And here we have a pretty short-term announcement because this is already a January 1st idea set, the Polaroid One-Step SX70 camera, an ideas entry. I mean, if we compare this with the original, no, that was wrong, wrong link. Oh, I forgot to link the original uh, camera. Okay, I will I will um, do this after I record the show. Um, then I add a link to the original ideas entry. Anyhow, Lego is selling these um, for 80 euros, basically, or 80 US dollars. That's quite high, 15.5 cents a piece. My guess is this has to do with the extras here. However, for this price point, you do not even get that many prints because if you look on the camera, these are all stickers, which is really a shame. However, it seems this, this photo box, if you will, these seem to be pet printed and you have a Polaroid on there on this what I guess is a two by four tile so that's nice and you have these three cards for the pictures which is nice but yeah it's still far too expensive if you ask if you ask me over here in Europe we see already that this thing it seems comes also broadly into retail so um, there are already a lot of discounts announced already <laughs> as part of pre-ordering so at least over here in Europe I don't know how it is in other regions of the world we may see more decent pricing but yeah this is far too high on Lego side for me this is 60 bucks maximum uh, list price um, by Lego um, I don't know I don't know what happened here but it looks it looks quite nice uh, you have the pictures included. Uh, so for those of you who like these kind of sets, um, I guess these are good news. Anyhow, moving on to another flower, uh, the 4747, the Daffodils. Daf Daf oh my God, I'm, I have no idea how to pronounce this. My apologies, 216 pieces, 15 bucks over here in Europe. I have not seen this in the US yet. In the UK, it's 13 a British pound and um, yeah I mean it's still another very simple flower set I personally have never really understood these I mean the botanical collection has a lot of great stuff to offer I don't know why they do these smaller pieces but I guess it's like you know small present or something um, or maybe these huge sets out of the botanical collection are you not your cup of tea so this might may be a more interesting one and then we come to one of my personal highlights of this week Marvel Rocket and Baby Groot out of the large lots of lots of out of the large number of announcements around Marvel. Um, one quick comment though, I will only talk about a small subset of sets that I found interesting. Um, however, there's more stuff as always. You can find this on CityB. Just go on the Lego brand or go on the brand category Marvel and then you will see all the sets. Anyhow, this is Rocket and Baby Groot, uh, the 76282, um, which Lego lists for 60 euros, 60 US dollars. Uh, it's also going to release January 1st. Um, as you can see over here in Europe, you already see uh, the first discounts as always. And because this is a retail set, but um, yeah, I mean, I really like the design. I think it's it's it just looks amazing. I see also, I'm not sure if this is a new uh, color for this mold, but if, if you look at his back, you see this, I don't know what the piece is called precisely, this bush basically. And it's here in reddish brown, which looks pretty cool though. And in, in entirely, I mean, there are so many very cool and interesting building techniques in here. So I'm really a big fan of the set. And they only use 566 pieces. I mean, he's small, right? He's smaller than I guess a lot of folks expect. And I think when the Groot uh, figure came out, a lot of folks were also surprised at how small it is. But yeah, I, I really love the building uh, building work here. Great work by the Marvel design team. Um, the figure is quite flexible. Baby Groot as a minifigure is also quite nice. So yeah, what's not to love about this set? And then we come actually to the, I think, worst set of the week. Um, the Marvel X-Men X-Jet 26281. Um, yeah, uh, 85 bucks. I don't know what is going on. We have seen this, I don't know, a few times over the years that the... I don't know, it's like General Grievous Starfighter or this other Hopper, or what was it called, recent Marvel set. Sometimes Lego is doing these vehicles and is asking for a price that I simply can't understand. So for me, this is like, if I, if I looked, just look at the, side of, the size of the Starfighter for minifigures, I would say this is a 40, 45 
uh, bucks uh, set and leg was asking for 85 and i have no idea why um i mean yes there are a couple of larger slopes in there there is you know there's the cockpit window um but I don't know. Come on, Lego. What is going on? 76281. Uh, the minifigures are nice for sure. I mean, I don't really understand the purple figure, um, but my understanding is from somebody who knows a lot more about Marvel than I do that this is a set that relates to um, an upcoming show, I think, on Disney Plus, so not something we already know. Um, so this might be the reason. Maybe we'll see uh, this purple Magento. Magneto? Magneto, is it right? Uh, Magento. <laughs> um, anyhow. Uh, don't know, uh, but I do like the figures. I mean, if if the original Marvel Universe is your cup of tea, but again, eighty five bucks is just crazy. I I don't know, it's it's twice as much as it should be. Anyhow, we're moving on to Spider Man versus Sandman Final Battle seven six two eight zero. Uh, it's cool that uh, they are bringing another set for this movie, but I also really like the Sandman. Um, they're using again this head piece that they also used, for instance, for the Iron Man um, buildable figure a couple of years ago. Uh, however, this time, of course, it is in Dark 10. It is printed, looks pretty nice. Interesting minifigure, I mean, nice minifigure collection, especially, what is this dude called? The lizard guy. Uh, he has also a tail, I think. Yes, the lizard guy has a tail. And there is, and I, yeah, here, there is an interesting piece. So please keep me honest here in the comment section. But as far, I've not, I haven't checked New Elementary or anything of, of these outlets who know more about this stuff than I do. But for me, this I at least have never seen this piece here before that Spidey is using basically... Uh, this is his spider web, right? Uh, and looks pretty cool. And as you can see here in this picture, also a bit better. Um, this guy here also has this lizard dude, also has a nice tail. Actually, um, what is also quite interesting, if you look at this picture again, I mean, look at how much cooler Marvel minifigures are and how much more effort they put into them compared to the Star Wars, right? You have printed hips, printed toes, a lot of stuff that a lot of uh, Star Wars minifigures don't get. Um, but yeah. Really nice set. I uh, like the design. Uh, I like the minifigures. And then I picked a mech, actually. War Machine Mech Armor, the 76277. I wanted to talk about this one because I this is one of the very few of these new modern mechs, right? They have done this with Marvel before. Never really understood them. Like, I don't know, was Wolverine, I think, was one, right? There was Wolverine in such a mech. Makes no sense. Why would Wolverine do that? And then, of course, they went into the entire craziness of instead of doing microfighters, they did these Star Wars mechs. And I hope they will never do them again because it's so weird. Um, I mean, they had great minifigures, a couple of interesting pieces, including a printed uh, Imperial logo on a 2x2 tile, which is really cool. Um, and the minifigures were nice, but microfighters are so much cooler for Star Wars. But here, I mean, again, this mech... As far as I can tell, we have never seen it in any Marvel Cinematic Universe or whatever movie, but um, at least it makes some sense, right? Because Iron Man and, and um, you know, we have seen in Iron Man 1, I think, if I recall, even from time to time, you have these bigger mechs, right? Um, which are almost no suits anymore. They are more like mechs. And I think so, at least, you know, here with War Machine, this could have existed. At least I have much lesser problems um, seeing seeing something like this. Plus, the minifigures is really cool. Um, really always, I've always found, I mean, in the beginning when War Machine was first introduced in the cinematic universe, I was thinking like, oh, you, you are a knockoff of Iron Man, right? But over time, I really got fond, um, got fond of him. And I think he has a pretty cool minifigure in here. The Mac, like I said, fits. Uh, the mech itself is, is quite beautifully designed. Really like these uh, this tube, basically. I guess it's bringing ammunition uh, into the arms, right? This is also pretty cool. It has a certain like mech warrior vibe um, or battle tech vibe, which I think is really cool, or Warhammer vibe, if you will. So yeah, like the mech, like the minifigure. Um, this is a good one. I think this is the only mech of this entire kind of design that I like. Anyhow, uh, with that, we're moving on to availabilities on Fantasy side. Here we have the Retro Gramophone, one of two retro sets that uh, they recently released, the 85009. Um, this thing has a list price of $80 US. That's, uh, that is 12 and a half and a half cents a piece. Assuming that the piece count is correct, you should always keep in mind that Fantasy itself is not releasing any um, piece counts. But... Um, 
it's still pretty pricey. However, I mean, you have a, a lot of custom pieces in there that, that are not very common. You have a ton of prints. There are no stickers in the set. There's a lot of interesting functionality. So if this gramophone and classical music is your cup of tea, uh, then I think, yeah, you should have a lot of fun with the set. Actually, we have published a review on this one. I will come to that in a second. And the sister set, if you will, is a retro projector. The 85010 is like a cinema projector, I guess. Um, we also did a review on this one, 70 bucks, 9.8 cents a piece. However, you get some electronics. There's a lens actually in there because this projector actually does work. I will come to that. I will come to that in a second. There are a couple of prints in there. Again, no stickers. So quite nice. Gobrex pieces in both sets. Um, so yeah, you get a lot of value for your money, but it's not it's not cheap let's put it that way then we have now availability in asia um of the black pearl the new ship by rare break 66036 and i think it's a pretty nice build i haven't built rare breaks in a while i built some of the earlier ships so they they did a pirate ship an imperial ship before like one or two years maybe ago uh, i did build them really like them to a certain degree however material quality was definitely an issue and and uh, the instructions were awful trust me awful the the most awful instructions i have ever used almost impossible um, because you needed a magnifying glass to read them they were so awful that even my kids who have much better eyes than i have didn't want to build this thing anymore after a while so anyhow as far as i can tell because i have um, shipped a couple of rare brick sets to some of our authors uh, in the last couple of months and by uh, quickly looking into it, I can definitely say that the instructions got a lot better. They are like on par with other companies now. And it seems also the pieces got a lot better. So definitely want to build another railbreak set. And what's not to like about a big private ship? It's a meter in length, 70 centimeters in height. And I think it's 27 centimeters in width, 4,700 pieces. I definitely want to build this thing. And it looks really cool. Um, like the sales as well. Then they have announced, um, uh, or now is available actually, um, the 24 hour of Le Mans hybrid supercar, the 11031. Obviously, this thing has a lot of similarities to a certain Peugeot uh, car. Uh, however, Railbrex doesn't have a, a license for the IP, so that's why they just call it a hybrid supercar. Obviously, this, in, if you look at it first glance, this might look like a knockoff from the Lego set, but that is not true. Lego, the Lego set, if I recall correctly, is a Technic set. This is a system set, so it's entirely different. However, they are both based, of course, on the same Peugeot model. Obviously, Lego does have a license for the IP. Um, on the other hand, you get this thing a lot cheaper. Rio Bricks is listing this for $81, and you can buy this in, as you can see, in China, in this case, 40 for 50 three bucks um it's it's a lot smaller i guess also as the lego model i have never built the lego model so i can't really compare but this thing is 36 and a half centimeters in length nine in height and 14 width and it looks quite nice i must say really really cool build um but yeah, I guess it's a matter of taste if you're more into system or technic bricks. And then we have availability of, of a car I talked about a couple of weeks ago, I think, from TGL. The big SUV and metallic silver is there. I guess this is, again, a set without an IP license, but my guess is this is a Porsche, right? Um, anyhow, 5041, it's a 1x8 scale vehicle, 3,500 pieces, and you can buy this in Asia for around 160 bucks. Uh, by the way, I fixed uh, the buy wheel pricing here. In the past, this was always without shipping, and shipping is quite expensive, coming from China over air uh, to the West. So now it is, um, I think, including standard shipping to Europe. Uh, is in 100 or to Germany to be more precise is is included here in the price to give you a better idea like how much you have to pay otherwise people were quite shocked like okay set to be says it costs 100 bucks and then you know, know they add 50 bucks for shipping anyhow with that um, a quick um, info on a discount promotion that is upcoming for December 24th so Christmas 8 p.m. PST or what is that like 5 p.m. Um, no, I think it should be in the morning, CET. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, anyhow, on Christmas, was I think PM is wrong. I think it was AM. I have to double check. Anyhow, on Christmas, we will have a promotion from Light Tailing, 40% discount on all light kits. 
that um, f by means of Lego retrofit, of course, Brixmax light tailing, and but also, of course, also Brixmax stuff for mock lighting, which is a pretty good discount. I think over the Black Week they had like 50% on Black Friday, so that was slightly better, but 40% is still in, in the very high number. Like 50% discount they have maybe once or twice a year, 40% they have a bit more often, but yeah, I think it's a pretty good promotion. So if you're still in the market for some lighting, this may be the way to go. With that, we are coming to a couple of reading recommendations, and for First, we have published um, for Kada's Kitty's Grocery Store, the 66015. This has been written by uh, Stone Garden. And yeah, I think it's a pretty nice set. I've always been a big fan of these small Kada modulars in quotes. They are usually uh, around a thousand pieces, roughly something like 19 by 18 studs. Um, so I personally I always believe that these fit very well with the new street system from Lego, actually better than most of the Lego stuff does. Um, so if you're in the market for, let's say, um, you want to build a small city, but maybe you have like an Ikea shell, 40 centimeters in depth, something like this, you can build an entire city using these things uh, together maybe with the new streets from Lego. It's quite easy to do that. Um, you don't need that much space. There are actually other companies who do these small buildings uh, themselves. But they are even if they are small, they are still full-fledged buildings, you know, four walls and everything. And they are minifigure scale. I mean, obviously it's quite crowded in there but technically everything is up to scale for minifigures so I think the first designs that Kada did have been designed by the uh, very well known mock designer Access Sandbox um, so I'm not sure sure about the new ones I think they're not pointing out that they are by, from Access Sandbox so my guess is that they are their own designs uh, but nevertheless, I think um, yeah, these sets are really beautiful. And I think we had a couple of, uh, Stone Garden had a couple of complaints on the last one around the lighting. Quite interestingly, the last one was fully modular, so you can remove the upper floor, um, the roof, etc. But it actually did not work anymore after you uh, added the lighting because all the cables were in the way and you lo lost your modularity. In this one, however, this is not modular. It has different functions. You can basically switch you know, basically do a couple of changes up here, but technically it's not modular. You cannot remove the upper floor, but still they put the lighting only in the in the basement, which I think it's interesting. Maybe they should have done this the other way around. Anyhow, uh, lighting included. Um, and here you have the two newest ones um, together. And with that, we're moving on to uh, my biggest mistake of the week. I did this review of the Pantasy Retro Projector and I made a huge mistake. I misunderstood. Only, I think I built it live on stream and maybe I was too much focusing on the on the stream chat and not on the building. This cable here should not look like this. This cable should actually be integrated here into the build. So I made a huge mistake here. This should not look like this because it actually does awful. And the original version of this review, I even pointed this out and said, okay, this looks awful. They should have done this differently. Well, they did. I just did wrong entirely. Anyhow, everything else I wrote is still still makes sense, but this was entirely wrong. It looks crappy and this was 100% my mistake. And I think I put also here, yeah, I put a note in here. I changed my text a little bit. Um, so yeah, I made the mistake. The problem is I already disassembled this one. Um, so <laughs> that's why I can't take new pictures. But basically, you have to in every picture ignore this ugly cable. Everything else, uh, including my criticism and what I really liked and praised about the set is still still valid. But this cable should not be here. And with that, we're moving on to the retro gramophone again by Stone Garden. In this case, like I said, we published reviews on both sets. Um, I think it's a really nice set. She, I think that was also her resume that, you know, this, this looks quite nice. However, it's really, um, really expensive. Um, but yeah, here you go. Uh, three new pieces. Actually, I'm pretty sure that we published also a few more, like we have light, light kit reviews. Um, but these were basically translations of our original reviews. That's why I'm not pointing them out here. But yeah, as you can see, we keep publishing like almost every day right now. Uh, obviously, this will come to an end. Uh, going forward, we will publish all our reviews, uh, both on the German and on the English side. However, the republishing of older German content obviously will come to an end, I guess, somewhere in January, maybe February. I don't know how much stuff we have still left. There's still some stuff there, um, both for Lego, for lighting, but also for other brands. 
Anyhow, with that, we're moving on to something. Actually, when you listen to this, this has already been published. Um, however, when I'm recording this, it is not yet. So t- today, basically, this afternoon, I'm recording this in the morning. In the afternoon, Lego will uh, basically publish the review results of the um, of the current ideas wave. And um, I think I wanted to point this out to you. I will definitely talk about this in the next news show. By the way, there won't be a news show next week. So I I will be, you know, in the holidays. But I I hope I can record one on um, January 2nd, uh, 2024. Um, And then, of course, we will talk about it. Um, But but you could also check out the Lego Idea site. Basically, when you listen to this, it should be online at this point in time. But nevertheless, what I wanted to point out, they have now 71 submissions. So I think pre-corona, it was more like, a dozen <laughs> then during corona time it went up to 40 i i that's at least what i recall and now they had 70 submissions so i don't know this is getting out of control obviously it's lego's decision um but personally i would argue and in fact i know that i'm not the only one other outlets as well have started stopped reporting on every idea submission that went beyond 10,000. I mean, I did in the old days of this show, I did report on all of them. And I know a couple of other news outlets did as well. And I think I know from several that they that have stopped this because it's just too much. And um, so I, I don't know, I think it would be more smart for Lego if they would, I don't know, maybe raise the submission bar to 15 or 20,000, something like that, because this is this has gotten a bit out of control. But it may be exactly what the ideas team want, like more stuff to look at, more stuff to choose from. I don't know, maybe that is exactly what they want, but personally, I found it a bit overwhelming nowadays. But nevertheless, I mean, of course, I'm happy for everybody who made it beyond the 10,000. I think there's already a first... Um, I don't know, what do you get? Like vouchers from Lego? I'm not 100% sure, like 500 bucks or so, I've heard once. I'm not sure if that is true. But anyhow, happy for everybody who made it. As always, with Lego ideas, amazing stuff in there. But yeah, really looking forward to to hear from Lego what they intend to do. With that, we are coming to mocks of the week. And here, I think I picked six this week, seven actually. Um, first of all, we have the Black Knight's Dragon Slayer's Castle by Midi Bricks, 2,602 pieces, nine bucks for the instruction. That's not too shabby. And I do believe, again, it's a nice uh, castle that is very simply built. It's basically just one by X bricks, a lot of masonry bricks. So quite a simple design from a building technique, uh, technique perspective. Nevertheless, it like, looks quite coherent, uh, quite beautiful, actually. It should fit very well with Lion Knight's castle. And also for folks who are not maybe uh, that much into mock building so far, this should be really easy to build. And I guess, just guessing at this point, it should also be relatively easy to acquire the parts. Because yes, you need 2,600, but there's a lot of very similar pieces, right? I guess you have at least 200 masonry bricks in there, stuff like that. So um, from that point of view, I do believe it could be an interesting build. Personally, the building itself, I mean, you can close it. So it has, you know, four walls and everything. So it's not uh, like a Lego playset, but still the inside is a bit too shallow for my taste. Maybe two or three additional studs I would have really liked. But nevertheless, very nice, very beautiful design. And then we have by Let's Go. Um, I think that's the designer behind the Orient Express um, or the ideas provider, I should rather say, not the designer. But anyhow, um, he has now published the Medieval Street. And actually... I'm 1% sure I saw this already. So the problem is everything is so complicated nowadays because a lot of folks are publishing to ideas. Then also after some time um, publishing on Rebrickable, then we have the Bricklink mock pop-up store. Then we have the Bricklink designer program. So um, I get, at least I don't know how it is for you, but from time to time I get a bit confused. Like where have I seen this? So I'm pretty sure I've seen this somewhere on one of these platforms or one of these Lego outlets whatever you may call it so um if some of you remember better than me please let me know in the comment section i i just i thought about it for quite a while this morning and i just can't recall anyhow um it is a beautiful design the medieval street it's 3887 pieces not too yeah it's not a small one and he's asking for 18 bucks which i personally think is totally okay but what i really like about this one is it looks extremely detailed um everywhere but at the same time it is again very simple when it comes to building techniques because if you look at the buildings it's just masonry bricks and it's like almost exclusively masonry bricks i've talked about this before i think it's not easy to do this 
And still, um, it looks very detailed and and very coherent and quite nice. This is this is I think this is this is a good one. Um, what I don't can't see because he unfortunately published only one picture. If you can close the building, I guess you can because if you look at the shape of these two um, two sides, it looks like it's designed to be you know brought back together into one. One building, which I think is nice, gives gives the thing a lot of flexibility. So yeah, great design. And then with that, we are coming to something where I was actually almost cheering when I saw it because Edge of Bricks, it seems, is back into Star Wars. I think he hasn't published anything this year. Um, so that's I guess this is a good, a great wrap up um, for this year to finally have a Star Wars mock again. I really like Edge of Bricks mock designs, especially for Star Wars because I think what his designs are so great in is that I stay in the middle between these very often very tiny very shallow very fragile lego play sets right that are basically optimized for having something in minifigure scale that has like minimum piece count right because that's what the lego team does and then on the other hand you have these enormous sets and mocks in ucs minifigure scale like from lego the at in ucs and also many of these uh, big mocks um, that are sold by Brickwald and other companies um, that are minifigure scale, but they are all enormous. I mean, they need thousands and thousands of pieces, and they are, because they are so big, you can basically never use them in a mock because they will basically, you know, crush your entire mock, literally, if you put them on, right? I'm building Android right now. I can't throw in the Lego AT80 because Lego AT80 is, you know, when that thing runs through my mark then there's basically nothing left and this is a problem what edge of bricks does very well i think with this design as well is creating small designs that however feel like minifigure scale and they look almost ucs like and but they are still pretty small actually edge of bricks has also done an amazing 8080 i mean yes i just said it's not that big but this thing has only 4800 pieces uh in quotes and um it is quite large yes but it is still smaller than many of the others and at the same time it looks fully 100 ucs and there are other great designs from him as well that are always in this you know in this direction i mean look at this slave one this thing looks perfect it looks like ucs it has only 1400 pieces um so yeah this is like i said for me it feels all the time like a middle ground between um the big stuff and and let's say the small Lego play sets. And coming back to this one here, this is an X-Wing um, with only 986 pieces. And from my point of view, it looks perfect. I would argue that this thing looks as good as the current UCS model by Lego. And this is great work um, by Edge of Bricks. With that, we're moving on to Brick Artisan, who has created an alternate build of the 10326, uh, the new natural history modular obviously the designer had to work with what lego had in the box uh, i.e not enough tiles for building of this size but next to that it has a lot more um detail i wouldn't not even detail it's it's just more interesting to look at compared to the lego building um so i think he used the pieces a lot better than the lego designer this uh, designers did um, so yeah, great design, great work. I would definitely prefer this one in my city compared to the Lego set. However, I do uh, plan to review a lighting for the Lego set. So that's why I'm not changing it. But this could actually be an alternate build I want to build because I'm still not happy with the Lego building. Um, I think it's, it's just lacking. It's not interesting enough, especially on the inside. So um, yeah, this could be the way to go. Olive Street by Brick Artisan. With that, we're moving on to something funny. Um, because there's a picture from me uh, in this in this comment section of this one here. Marin Brick Design um, has published another, I mean, I think they're publishing like every day right now, um, a part of the Lego Winter Village mark. Um, in this case, it's the Christmas, new, Christmas newsstand. And this is based uh, from a design perspective on, on newsstands in Paris. And actually, there was a company, Funhole in this case, who did the same thing. Um, basically, they created a newsstand out of the same picture and just somebody posted a comment, actually, picture from my review as far as i can tell say here 
and without any text, just a picture. And Marin Brick Design answered with again without text. I mean, he added text later, but uh, just with a picture, which I think is really really cool. Great answer. And yes, I mean they are just look similar, but I think he was also a bit inspired um, as well by the fun hole set. And yeah, in fact, if the fun hole set is too big for you, um, this could be interesting as well to take a look at what Marin Brick Design has done here. Maybe even buy the fun hole set, and if you want to shrink it down a little bit, um, I guess the many of the pieces from Fano, especially all the prints, you could easily reuse here uh, in this mock as well. So this could be an interesting option. Nevertheless, independent of all of that, great design again by Marin Brick Design. With that, we're moving on to uh, another uh, alternate build of the 10325 Alpine Lodge by Brickwood Creations. I have already built a couple of her um, alternates, I think of the fire station and the elf clubhouse, if I recall correctly. And yeah, she's doing great work here with these alternate builds. And what I really like about this one is um, that it's now a full building, right? That's my biggest problem that I have with the Winter Village collection, that these are just, again, the, they're all too shallow. They are, I think the only exception is this... Uh, what was it called? Like Santa's coming for dinner thing. Um, that was the only one that had at least to a certain degree similarities to an actual building. And so I think what Brickwood Creations here did here, um, she managed to do this with the existing pieces, um, uh, is really great. Um, and I think it's great design. And also, I think a good starting point, starting your own winter village. And with that, we're moving on to a interesting alternate build by Tom Metallica. I guess it's supposed to mean 3,645 pieces for his or her, I guess Tom is a he, a modular Egyptian museum at 10 bucks. Um, like the design, however, uh, you need three sets uh, for this and not cheap ones. You need two Sanctum Sanctorums, um, which are for modular, in quotes, not very cheap uh, sets, simply because there's a Marvel license in there, Marvel minifigures, etc., etc. However, it could be interesting to buy two of these bad boys, sell the minifigures off, and then, you know, then you might be in a more interesting uh, territory price-wise. Anyhow, what I really liked is the idea of using the Indiana Jones sets to create modular um, building interior, if you will, right? For this, in this case, Egyptian Museum, obviously. You could use the larger Indiana Jones sets also to do something that is more like, um, like South, South American Museum or something like that, which I do believe is a great idea. Also like the mock, uh, a lot of a lot of good detail in there. Uh, and like I said, Egyptian Museum, I mean, what can go wrong here? Anyhow, I hope you liked the show. For those of you who watch this on YouTube, please leave a like or comment or even better, subscribe to the show. For you podcast listeners, um, again, review, comment, follow, subscribe, whatever it is called on every platform. And like I said, we now have this newsletter um, page on the website. So there is a ton of different ways to follow us and also um, configure your own email newsletter functionality to get updated on new sets. You can pick the brand you're interested in. You get automatically an email from us like, hey, here's a new set available. But also email um, subscription is feasible, is possible for just news updates, reviews, um, offers, deals, whatever you're interested in. We offer a lot of flexibility. If you go just on this newsletter button, uh, you will see all the different options for you to configure how to get updated just on the stuff you're interested in. With that, Thanks for listening. Uh, see you next year. Bye-bye.